Hello everyone and welcome to Royal Fashion News. My name is Brittany and today we are going over the many, many gorgeous tiaras that we saw at the wedding of Crown Prince Hussein and his wife, Princess Rajwa. They were some amazing, amazing pieces. And while I did cover the fashion in a separate video, I really wanted to go over the tiaras themselves. What is the most gorgeous pieces? What are some of the histories? Because we actually saw a lot of priceless pieces here at the wedding. And so I think it would be great fun to go over some of these in a little bit more detail, their history, their provenance, all these sorts of things. And that's usually what I do here on Tuesdays. Tuesdays are reserved for tiaras. Oh, it's a tiara. And I absolutely love tiaras. I think they're gorgeous. So that's what we usually try to do here on this channel is highlight some of these amazing pieces that many times have a long and treasured cultural heritage. In addition, so if you guys are interested in that, feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you back. In addition, I also have a main channel, Royal News Network. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. I also have an upcoming trip to Germany and Austria with some royal fans. So if you guys enjoy royals and want to chat about royals and see castles and palaces and everything, I do have spots available. So I'll link that down below and I also have a weekly newsletter Royal Wire which covers a lot of royal news. And so without further ado though, let's go ahead and get into this wedding. So when it comes to tiaras for the bride, she was gifted a new one. And the Jordanians aren't known for having a big tiara collection. And oftentimes it seems like many of them are owned by individual people rather than what many families do in order to keep these jewelry pieces together because oftentimes they can be hit with inheritance taxes is that they're part of some sort of trust. So because of this, the tiaras are not owned by individual women most of the time. They're owned by the family, basically, or the country, those sorts of things. And so when it comes to Jordan, it seems like it's a little bit different that these jewelry pieces are owned individually. And so Princess Brajwa got a new tiara because there's just not that many to choose from within the family. And it has this amazing, delicate scroll detailing on it and also has a special little message. It is in Arabic, which is able to be, I think, a really gorgeous script on a tiara, which is very different. Like I would, you know, you would see English on a tiara and you would weep because it would be so awful. But <laughs> Arabic looks amazing. So it did have a special message, and that was a play on her name as Rajwa, whose first name translates to hope. And the tiara message it said said Rajwa min Allah, so hope from God. And so I think that this was a really detail and surprise to have on the tiara. I didn't notice it until more people started to report it. So I just thought it was just a lovely, lovely addition there. And I think something that really, really stands out. And I, it's a delicate piece. It's a beautiful piece. I think she wore it really, really well. There actually have been royal ladies whose wedding tiara placement have been a bit of a bomb believe it or not. So I think it just looked really, really gorgeous on her. So I have to say bravo to that gorgeous tiara. It looks amazing. I can't wait to see her in it more. And I think she'll get a lot of opportunities, especially as she grows within her role as the future queen of Jordan. Okay, so next we will talk about Queen Rainia. So this is Rajwa's mother-in-law and Queen Rainia also wore a tiara that was a nod to their Islamic heritage, which is the Arabic scroll tiara. Again, the, the writing in Arabic is so incredibly beautiful and this actually worked really, really well on the tiara. I think it's a, just an absolutely gorgeous piece. Apparently the script there says greatness for Allah. Now how it tells you that I do not know. Don't ask me, but I think it's a stunningly beautiful piece. It really does. I think Rainia wears it really, really well. And according to Royal Watcher blog, it contains about 1300 diamonds, including seven drop stones topped by large pear shaped diamond weighing 20 carats. And so this was actually purchased for Rainia by her husband, King Abdullah. And it's one that she debuted in 2005 at the state visit to the Netherlands. But she really hasn't worn it much since. So it, there could be a couple reasons for that. One, it could just generally be uncomfortable, even though it's a gorgeous piece. It just, it does, it's not really all that comfortable for her. 
And the other problem it could be is that she tends to wear her smaller piece much more often. And it could be that she's just somebody who doesn't handle the weight of a tiara well. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, tiaras can weigh quite a bit. And not all women enjoy that weight or they get headaches really easily. I know I get headaches from headbands, so I technically would probably struggle to wear a tiara because of the weight and the pressure of it. It would be much like wearing a headband, although much more valuable, obviously. But what I love is the idea that you can put like Excedrin on tap and everybody utilizes Excedrin because it is the most gorgeous piece. And so, yes, we know this was made by Fred as well. And we don't know too many other details. We don't know the price. Obviously, a 20 karat diamond would push that cost up there. So that is still though amazing. It was so gorgeous to see. I think it's an incredible, amazing piece. But I think one of the most talked about tiaras of the evening, of course, was Catherine's and the Queen's Mary's Lover's Knot tiara. Yes, I know it's often called the Cambridge Lover's Knot, but it's actually a copy of the Cambridge Lover's Knot. Queen Mary liked it so much, she basically made a copy for herself. But it's been very nebulous, the name that's been used. I have seen Cambridge Lover's Knot quite a bit. And so that really got into the public imagination. Sometimes those things are hard to change, but this is technically the Queen Mary's Lover's Knot. So it was made by Gerard in 1913, according to the court jeweler. And I did a whole video on this that I'll post later at a different point. And so it was something that the Queen Mary left obviously to Queen Elizabeth. She wore it quite often when she was young, but it wasn't until Diana, Princess of Wales, started to wear it that the tiara really started to get this magical quality to it. There's a delicateness to it. It has the Kokoshnik style a bit. And it's something that Diana wore quite frequently. It was the only tiara lent to her by the queen. She also used her family's tiara. And although Diana is very familiar with this tiara and wore it quite a bit, she apparently didn't like it too much because the pearls in the top moved quite a bit, jangled, and it was rather heavy. So she wasn't a huge fan of it. And once she passed away, it went into the vault and we didn't know when we would see it again. I wasn't sure if we would see it until even Charlotte was an adult. But then Catherine, the Princess of Wales, debuted it in 2015. And I gotta say, Catherine smashes this tiara. She looks exceptional in this tiara. And this time it's no exception as well. It's her go-to tiara. I wish she had other options, but again, the Brits are not as into sharing jewelry as other royals are. I don't know if that'll change. The tiara is meant for her, I think she looks incredible in it. I think especially her appearance at the state visit of South Africa was particularly gorgeous. That dress and the tiara together just were absolute magic. And this time too, she looked absolutely stunning. And we got two new things out of this event for that particular tiara. The first one is that it's the first time Catherine has worn that tiara with her hair down. Every other time it's been an updo. So we see her changing up her look with the tiaras a bit. She actually did this at the diplomatic reception earlier this year with the lotus flower, but it's great to see her do it with the Queen Mary's Lover's Knot as well. In addition, this is also the first time Catherine has worn a tiara outside the United Kingdom. And so this will be something she'll have to get used to more and more as her and William take on greater and greater tours because Camilla doesn't really like to fly. Charles is getting older as well. So I think they'll be called upon to do a lot of tours. And so that'll be something very, very different for them, I think, and something that they'll have to get used to. But I think Catherine looks utterly gorgeous in this tiara. It is one of my favorites. And so I'm so excited that she was able to wear it. So one of the other big surprises was Princess Beatrice's second tiara appearance. So she originally wore the Queen Mary's fringe tiara for her wedding to her husband. And that was the first time we had seen her in tiara. And I was pretty sure that would perhaps be the last. I was thinking maybe for the coronation, Charles would bring out the jewels, but he didn't. But as Beatrice was invited, she was allowed to wear a tiara. Now she didn't get to wear the other tiara because it's actually quite a prominent piece in the British collection. She wore it actually initially for her wedding because we have three generations of royal ladies now who have been the first blood princess of their generation to wear a tiara. So that was initially the queen, then it was Princess Anne, and then it was Princess Beatrice. So the next woman to wear at a wedding should be Princess Charlotte. This was a tiara purchased for Sarah Ferguson. It's from Gerard, and we haven't seen this in about 25 years years. So it was just unbelievably stunning to see it again. It was just such a cr incredible 
an amazing surprise to see Beatrice. I think she looks absolutely fabulous in the tiara. It looks, I don't know if it's her hair, but it looks slightly crooked maybe. But I love the scrolling detail on it. It's just a very beautiful and delicate piece, I think. And I think she wore it really, really well. And it's just so, so nice to be able to see that tiara out. Again, it looks like the last time Sarah wore it was in 2001. So it's a gorgeous and stunning piece. And it's so exciting to be able to see something that we haven't seen in quite a while. That doesn't happen too terribly often. So now we'll move over to the Netherlands Royals and we'll start off with Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. Yes, so she is Maxima likes her jewels, what can I say? She wears them exceptionally well, and the go-to tiara for her recently has been the Stuart tiara. This is a massive piece within the Dutch collection, and it's often called the house tiara as well because it's filled with the house diamonds as they call the Stuart collection. But there are different settings to it. So she wore one of the lower settings here. She first debuted this setting in Germany. And so it's without the, a center spike with a diamond on it at the top in the front and the center there. And so it's an amazing piece, very, very versatile. Queen Maxima is very, very good at mixing it up. Why it's called the Stuart is that it's known for featuring what is called the Stuart Diamond, which is a 40 karat light blue diamond that usually can sit at the top. It's a massive piece though. So Maxima has worn it several times about four different ways, including with the Stuart. She debuted that in the UK because there's actually a relationship between the Stuart Diamond and the United Kingdom. They actually it resided in the United Kingdom for a period of time before it came over to the Netherlands in the 1700s or maybe very early 1800s, if I remember correctly. And so it was something that they actually briefly had a exchange over. They were like, hey, I want this diamond back. And the Dutch are like, no, you can't have it back. It had a historic connection to the UK, which is why Maxima wore it to her first state visit to the United Kingdom. And she has continued to wear it ever since. So again, it is lovely to see this one being pulled out of the vault so much because actually the former queen didn't like to wear it. She's one of those ones who suffered with a headache. So she never actually wore the tiara. So there was even a question of, did it still exist or did they break it up? So thankfully they did not. And we were able to see it here again. And then we also had so exciting the debut of a second tiara for Princess Katharina Malia. She will be the future queen of the Netherlands. And she wore the ruby peacock tiara. It's very, very fun. It has this great look to it. It mixes rubies and diamonds. It's just absolutely stunning. It was made in 1897. This is according to the court jeweler, and it was made during the reign of Queen Wilhelmina. It also has a large brooch and necklace that are part of the set. The necklace has been worn by Queen Maxima. There was actually a long time where it hadn't been worn and many were wondering if when she debuted the necklace, if it was actually the tiara that had been converted into a necklace because they can do that. As it turns out, that wasn't the case, but Maxima has worn this quite a few times and it's something that she really enjoys. And now that we have Princess Katharina Amalia in it, I have to say I wasn't a fan of Katharina Amalia in this tiara. I don't know if it was, sometimes your facial structure does mean that certain tiaras just don't look as good on you because of the way it highlights certain features of your face. I don't know if it's that, I don't know if it's the placement. I really felt like her hair would be better suited if it was down, that's just my opinion. So I just wasn't a super big fan of it on her, but I still think it's just, again, the Dutch have one of the most stunning collections in all of the U in all of Europe. So I think it was great to see that out there. And so I can't wait to see more of what Princess Katharina Malia brings because actually she is a huge tiara fan and jewelry fan. She said in an interview for a book about her when she turned 18 that she can you can show her a picture of a tiara in Europe and she can tell you it's Providence where it's from who wears it all those sorts of things and a lot of details about it so she is a royal tiara fan as well so we are in good company guys so the next one we're going to talk about is crown princess Mary of Denmark she was wearing her Edwardian tiara so this is one she actually purchased at auction and it has rubies and diamonds in it. It has a delicate, it's a delicate piece. It can be converted into a necklace and we don't know too much about it. So according to the auction, it was a diamond jewelry set that was comprising of a necklace and a pair of later ear screw set with 
numerous rose and old mine cut diamonds, circular cut rubies and spindles mounted in 14 karat gold and silver. So I, the, the piece is unique and interesting yet at the same time, it doesn't have a lot of oomph to it. it that's, if you could say that. So it's not my favorite necessarily. I like something with a little bit bigger diamonds, but the Danish are not known for their huge tiara collection. They have a decent one, but the queen wears most of those. So Crown Princess Mary, she initially had her wedding tiara that was, I'm sorry, but it was pretty, it was pretty pathetic. <laughs> and then she also had her, a quite impressive piece that is reserved basically for it was left to crown prince frederick to be used by the future crown princess it was a danish ruby tiara and that is it has flowers it's it's a very very gorgeous piece it's actually diamond and ruby as well and then she has another one that she can be lent from time to time so this was just another piece to add to her collection which i think is good because she was sadly missing more but at the same time and it just felt like it left a lot to be desired it's just not my favorite so now we're going to talk about crown princess victoria and she's wearing one of the tiaras that can also be converted into a necklace. And now I'm gonna butcher this, this name, Bertrand Laurel Wreath Tiara. And it has a long storied history within the Swedish royal family. So it belonged to Crown Princess Margaret and she was given it by her grandmother-in-law, Queen Sophia of Sweden. And this piece wasn't really ever seen on Crown Princess Margaret, but became associated with Lillian after it was given to her after she started dating Margaret's third son, Prince Bertolt. So there's actually a really interesting love story here. They met during the war, Lillian and Bertolt, and she was actually married to somebody else. And even though her husband her and her husband ended up amicably divorcing and she wanted to marry Bertel, it was still out of the question. And so they ended up living together for a long time and then were finally able to get married. And Lillian was very, very close to Crown Princess Victoria and the rest of King family. So her death really devastated them and apparently she left her jewelry to Crown Princess Victoria. And Victoria, I think this piece looks pretty great on her, although I would say when she first debuted it, at the wedding of her sister, Princess Madeline of Sweden in 2013, I believe. It was my favorite appearance for this. I think Victoria looks absolutely smashing in the dress, in the tiara, in the necklace, which were also Princess Lillian's. So I think she looked really, really gorgeous there. I, like I said, I don't love Victoria's look here. I don't hate it, but it is not, I wouldn't necessarily say my favorite tiara. It's, it just definitely has a very unique look to it. Okay, next we'll talk about the Liechtenstein tiara. So this was the tiara worn by Crown Princess Sophie of Liechtenstein, which is a fun thing to say. And so she wore the Kenzie Honeysuckle tiara. And this is a beautiful and rather unique piece. And it has a high profile. I think she wears it exceptionally well. So when it comes to the his its history within the Liechtenstein royal family, it was initially started as part of the Kenzie family collection and eventually went to Maria Josefina of Liechtenstein and her new husband that was born in 1870. This is according to the court jeweler, but it's unclear exactly from that time in the late 1800s to now pretty much in about the 1980s when it came back out again, how exactly it stayed within the family because sometimes these jewelry pieces, they, they tend to float around, they go to different family members. So it's unclear exactly how this all sort of came to be. But once again, I think it's an amazing piece. I think Sophie wore it exceptionally well. And it's great to see, again, more tiaras out there. And I love how, a bit how she wore a floral dress so that gave her a bit of gravitas. And she also wore it a bit further back on her head because so her hair, to a certain extent, almost covers it. So again, I still love it, but yes. It would be great to see a bit more of it on her. And then just to wrap it up, we'll talk about the Jordanian royals. So first we'll talk about Princess Iman. So she is the younger sister of Crown Prince Hussein. And she was given a tiara for her wedding day. And so according to reports, this tiara actually belongs to King Abdullah's mother, Princess Muna Al Hussein. And so she was lent this tiara and it was from Chalmette. Chame. And I think it's a gorgeous piece. It has this fringe detailing on it. It's very, again, delicate, beautiful, stunning. 
Princess Iman also wore another tiara, one of her mother's in an official portrait. She wore the Jordanian diamond floral tiara. I think it's a stunning piece. I actually love this tiara on Princess Iman. I think we haven't seen it though anywhere else except for on Iman. So it's, it's interesting that there's reports that it does belong to her her grandmother, but it could be also something too. It's said that perhaps it was lent to her. It could have been gifted. It's unclear. So I'm seeing a couple different things here. Tiara Mania saying they, they speculated that the tiara was one that belonged to Iman's grandmother. Perhaps it wasn't. I'm just going to say it is a new tiara. We don't really know. And it also has an Arabic saying on it, which again, I think is a beautiful tradition. It could be a tiara too that was re fitted and given to Iman, that's entirely possible as well. And finally, we have Princess Salma of Jordan. And I believe this is the first time we've seen her wear a tiara. And she wore the tiara that Queen Rania is most likely to wear. It's a Boucheron bracelet tiara. It is a very delicate, small piece. And obviously it would be exceptionally light. And because this is pretty much Rania's favorite tiara, I have a really strong feeling that she is somebody who doesn't particularly like the weight of heavy tiaras and prefers this simpler, modern, much lighter style. So that would just be interesting to know. I would love to know what her tiara preference is, why she tends to go with something so much smaller when she can go with something so grand. Because don't we love grand tiaras? Don't we all have a little bit of Amy Farrah Fowler in us? Of course I do, I'm a princess and this is my tiara! <laughs> So guys, and thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of these different tiaras. I know we didn't cover some of the other ones like the Japanese tiaras and everything. I just am not quite as familiar with them and their distinctions. So guys, thank you so much for watching again and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.